Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, this week, we're going to try and take our eyes off that gorgeous winter sky that we've been looking at about due south for the past few weeks. We're going to turn around and face north. Let's get reacquainted with the northern circumpolar sky and maybe even get a faint hint of spring. So we're going to start off this week looking north a few hours after sunset tonight. Now, for this episode, I want to change our field of view a little bit because we'll be talking about such a wide area of the sky. Similar to last episode when we talked about the winter circle, let's zoom out here and see the entire northern sky. It's a little distorted around the edges, but everything in the middle will appear like this in the sky, just much bigger. Keep in mind, the view here in the north goes from the horizon almost to the top of the sky. For those of us living in the northern hemisphere, the northern sky is pretty consistent. Unlike the seasonal sky with changing moon phases, wandering planets, and constellations that change by the season, the northern sky has the same stars visible all year long, not rising or setting, but circling around a very special star, Polaris, the North Star. That star doesn't appear to move, staying in the same spot all night long and all year long. But why is that? Well, it has to do with the Earth spinning. The Earth spins in space, causing the stars, the sun, the moon, and the planets to appear to rise and set in the sky. The Earth is spinning on an axis, kind of like a big stick stuck through it. This has two ends, the north and south poles. Well, it just so happens that right now, the north pole of the Earth points reasonably close to this star, what we call Polaris, the pole star. So the entire northern sky appears to rotate around this star. It isn't a particularly bright star, although it is in the top 50 brightest, but it's bright enough to be seen with a little practice even through quite light polluted skies. The easiest way to find it is using a very bright pattern that I'm sure you've heard of before, the Big Dipper. It's formed by these seven bright stars, four of them forming the bowl or cup, and three behind forming the handle. The two stars at the end of the bowl are often called the pointer stars, because if you draw a line through them and keep going, they point to Polaris, the North Star. This is a great way to get oriented in the sky, especially if you're stargazing in a new place and aren't sure which way is which. Find the Big Dipper, locate the pointer stars, and point to Polaris. Polaris will be due north. From mid-northern latitudes, the Big Dipper is what is known as a circumpolar pattern of stars. That means it never sets, ever. It's close enough to the North Star in the sky that from mid-northern latitudes, it stays above the horizon as the Earth spins. From Chicago and a lot of other places, it's visible in the sky all night long and all year long as well. Now, where it is in the North does change throughout the night and throughout the seasons. Tonight, it's lower in the Northeast as darkness falls, during the spring evenings, it'll be high overhead to begin the night. In the late fall, it's quite low in the north, skimming the treetops and a little bit harder to pick out. It's a very eye-catching asterism, or pattern of stars, so throughout time and in different places, many people have looked up and imagined it as different things. It's part of the official constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear. The bowl marks the body, and the handle marks the oddly long tail of the bear. The tradition of the bear originates with the Greeks. An older interpretation is a wagon, and that's Mesopotamian in origin. This is common in places like Germany, Italy, Hungary, and Scandinavia. In Ireland and the UK, it's known as the plow. In Hinduism, it's known as the seven sages. And the Iroquois Native Americans interpret the tale as three hunters pursuing the bear. This pattern of stars appears in one of my favorite paintings, Van Gogh's Starry Night Over the Rhone. It also figures prominently on the state flag of Alaska. Well, if there's a Big Dipper and a Big Bear, you probably expect there's going to be a Little Dipper and a Little Bear. Polaris, the North Star, marks the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, and also the end of the tail of Ursa Minor, 
the little bear. This pattern is much dimmer and very tough to see from light polluted skies, but that anchoring star Polaris at least clues you in to where it ought to be. Now the North Pole doesn't point directly at Polaris, just pretty close. And it hasn't always done that, and it won't always in the future. Where the pole points changes very slowly in a process called precession. Over a human lifetime or even a few centuries, it doesn't change enough to really notice much. But over thousands of years, it really has an effect. About 5,000 years ago, when the Great Pyramids were being built, Earth's North Pole pointed near this star called Thuban. That's in the constellation of Draco the Dragon. Draco is quite dim, but from a darker sky, you can trace out a sinuous, long body of a dragon curled around the northern sky. Another dim animal in this area is a giraffe, Camelopardalus. We've seen some dim constellations before, like the unicorn hidden near Orion, but this one might take the cake. It doesn't appear in star charts until the early 1600s, and I've never seen any attempt to draw a real giraffe in the very dim stars here. The same thing can be said about Lynx, which is right in front of the nose of the Great Bear. It is very dim. At least in this case, though, there's a good reason. The stellar cartographer Hevelius called these hard-to-see stars Lynx precisely because they were hard to see. He wrote that only those who have the sight of a lynx can see it. So at least he's honest about it. The giraffe? Not so much. Also joining the crowd in this northern sky are Cassiopeia the Queen and Cepheus the King. We've covered them in other videos, but do look for Cassiopeia directly across the North Star from the Big Dipper. The W shape is also circumpolar from mid-northern latitudes. Well, you might wonder, what if you're not in mid-northern latitudes? Well, let's head south to the mid-southern latitudes. From here and anywhere south of the equator, the North Star won't be visible. But there are some handy patterns to figure out where south is. There's no bright south star currently, but the long axis of the Southern Cross constellation points to roughly the spot where the South Pole points. Back in northern latitudes while you're outside checking out the circumpolar stars, consider looking for the first hints of spring in the sky. If you imagine the bowl of the dipper is filled with water and you poke a hole in the bottom, the water will drip out onto the back of Leo the lion. Leo will be well up in the east by a few hours after sunset. Look for his backwards question mark or sickle that form his head and mane, and then the back legs and the tail. Leo's rising earlier and earlier every night, and by the time spring starts, next month, believe it or not, he'll be well over the horizon at sunset. So I challenge you this week to get outside and find the circumpolar sky from where you are. Trace out the patterns, get familiar with them, and then throughout the year, see how consistent they are in the sky. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next week.